Hello and welcome to Mr Morton Science Videos. I'm Mr Morton and this week we're looking at A-level chemistry past paper questions. Uh, as always the paper we're looking at is linked in the description below so if you want to go yourselves just click on the link and you can download it. The paper we're looking at today is AQA Chemistry, uh, Chem 1 Foundation Chemistry from June 2014. And we're just starting question number 5. Okay, question 5. Some oil fired heaters use paraffin as a fuel. One of the compounds in paraffin is the straight chain alkane dodecane. We'll use that information later. Give the name of the substance from which paraffin is obtained. State the name of the process used to obtain paraffin from this substance. Now, this is a nice easy GCSE question. Um, paraffin is obtained from crude oil. And the way that we obtain that is from fractional distillation. Five B. The combustion of dodecane produces several products. Write an equation for the incomplete combustion of dodecane to produce a gaseous product. And when you combust something, there are three things that you can make. You can make either carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, or carbon. Now, in the question, they said it's incomplete, so that rules out carbon dioxide and that it must be a gas that rules out carbon. So we're going to be looking at uh, carbon monoxide. So we're going to take uh, C12, H26, plus O2, and we're going to make H2O and carbon monoxide. Now the number of carbons here is 12, so we're going to make 12 carbon monoxides. The number of hydrogens here is 26. We divide that by 2 to work out how many waters we're going to get. We're going to get 13 waters. And then we're going to add up the total number of oxygen on this side to work out how many oxygens we need on this side. We have got 12 in the carbon monoxide, and we've got 13 here. We add that up, we get 25. Divide that by 2 to get your O2, we get 12.5. So that'll be our answer. C12H26 plus 12.5 O2 goes to 13H2O and 12CO. Right, 5C. Oxides of nitrogen are also produced during the combustion of paraffin in air. Explain how these oxides of nitrogen are formed. Now when we're combusting a fuel, this will be the same as um, when we form oxides in a petrol engine. It's going to be... because there's a high temperature okay and that is causing the the nitrogen from the air reacts with oxygen from the air okay it's important to know that the nitrogen does not come from the fuel itself, but it's from the air. 5C part 2. Write an equation to show how nitrogen monoxide, NO, in the air is converted into nitrogen dioxide. So we know it's been converted into NO2. So obviously we must be adding something here. We're going to be adding oxygen. So NO plus O2 goes to NO2, we need to balance it, we've got three oxygens on this side, two on this side, we can put a two in front of here so we get a total of four, and a two in front of here so we get a total of four. 5C part three. Nitric acid, HNO3, contributes to the acidity in rainwater. Deduce an equation to show how nitrogen dioxide reacts with oxygen and water to form nitric acid. Now we need to have, in our reactants, nitrogen dioxide and oxygen and water and in our products we've got to have nitric acid so let's have a go at that now we've got NO2 
plus oxygen plus H2O forms, and it gives you this in the question, HNO3. Okay. Now, all these are going into here. We just need to figure out the ratio of reactants to make these products. Okay, the empirical formula of HNO3 is 1 to 1 to 3. We can use this to help us try and work out what we need to do here. Now, we need to make the ratio of N to H to th uh, oxygen on this side of the equation to also be 1 to 1 to 3. That means that the one that we've got the most to play with is the oxygen. Now, at the moment, if we just have NO2 and H2O, that will give us three oxygens. The hydrogen needs to be half as many as the nitrogen because it's H2. And we also know that this oxygen can be used to fill in the gaps. So we're going to try by putting a 2 in front of the nitrogen. So now we've got 2N and 2H. That's in the right ratio. We've now left with 1, 2, 3, 4 oxygens here. 5, 6, 7. That's not quite the right ratio, but if we put 0 0.5 here, that would give us 6, which I think would be the right ratio. So 2NO2 plus 0 0.502 plus H2O, we'll just check that. We have got in our reactants and our products, N times 2, N times 2. H times 2 and H times 2, all good so far. And then oxygen on this side, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And on this side, 1, 2, 3 times 2 is 6. So that is balanced, that's our answer. 2NO2 plus 0 0.502 plus H2O goes to 2HNO3. And of course you could multiply everything by 2 to make it Nice numbers, but this is fine. Okay, 5D. Dodecane, C12H26, can be cracked to form other compounds. Give the general formula of the homologous series that contains dodecane. Now, the clue is in the name. Decane. Okay, a uh, anything that ends in A and E is an alkane. The homologous series for alkanes is C, N, H, 2, N, plus 2. D part 2. Write an equation for the cracking of one molecule of dodecane into equal amounts of two different molecules, each containing the same number of carbon atoms. State the empirical formula of the straight chain alkane that is formed. Now the clues in the question here is it makes equal amounts so that means same number of moles of two different molecules, each containing the same number of carbon atoms. So we've got C12, H26. That's been broken down into two other things. Now if it's got the same number of carbon atoms, the 12 gets broken down into two, so it'd be C6 plus C6. One of these is going to be an alkane. So the alkane for C6 with times the 6 by 2, and add 2 will be H14, and what's remainder is the alkene, which will be C6H12. Second part of the question asks us for the empirical formula of the alkane. The alkane is C6H14, so we're going to simplify that. We end up with C3H7, because we're dividing everything by 2 to get the simplest ratio. The catalyst that will be used in this reaction will be a zeolite catalyst. 5D part 3. Explain why the melting point of dodecane is higher than the melting point of the straight chain alkane produced by the cracking dodecane. Okay, now dodecane is your C12 alkane and the straight chain alkane was your C6 alkane. So why is the melting point of dodecane higher than the melting point of hexane? 
The reason for that is because dodecane is a larger molecule and so has larger van der Waals forces of attraction and so more energy is needed to overcome this. And that is what um, melting is. It's when you're overcoming the van der Waals forces between the molecules. Okay, when we turn over the page, we get the second part of uh, question 5, 5e. Give the IUPAC name for the following compound and state the type of structural isomerism shown by this compound and dodecane. Okay, now the IUPAC name, first thing we need to do is number our carbons. So we've got most of our functional groups at this end, so I'm going to name this one carbon 1, this one carbon 2, this one 3, 4, 5, and 6. And then we can start to begin to name it. So 6 carbons means it's hex. There are no double bonds in this um, hydrocarbon, so it's hexane. And then we've got, on the second carbon, we've got two methyl groups. So you write this down as 2, 2. On the third carbon, we've got two methyl groups. So you write that down as 3, 3. And on the fourth carbon, we've also got two methyl groups. So 4, 4. Six methyl groups altogether. So the suffix for that, the prefix for that is hexa. So it'd be hexa, methyl. And then we use the hexane from earlier, hexane. 223344 hexamethylhexane. The type of structural isomerism shown here is branched chain isomerism. Part F. Dodecane can be converted into halododecanes. That's a, a dodecane that's reacted with a halogen, one of group 7 elements. Deduce the formula of a substance that could be reacted with dodecane to produce one chlorododecane and hydrogen chloride only. And the way we can do this is if we work out what dodecane was, so that was C12H26, we're adding something and we're ending up with one chlorododecane, which is C12H25. Cl plus HCl. Now it's quite obvious there that we've added two chlorines, so we end up with Cl2. So your answer will be Cl2. Okay, thank you for watching this video today. Hopefully that's helped you with your A-level chemistry revision. We'll move on to question six in the next video.